Hey folks, it's Carl over at HunzaHealthy.com. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Ask the Expert. This is part one of a, of a two-part series discussing nutrition and your workouts. In this particular video, we're going to be discussing pre-workout nutrition. And I can't think of anybody more qualified to speak to us on this than my friend and training guru, Greg Giuliano. Hi, Thanks. Carl. Thanks for inviting me down here. It's great to have you. This is great. Um, Greg, you've been a certified personal trainer for 32 years, right? Yeah. yeah. Certified through the American Council of Exercise. Right. And also through the International Sports Science Association. Correct. Yeah. And uh, Greg's worked with uh, numerous elite athletes at both the college and the professional levels. You were also at the uh, Keola Mamo yes. Holistic health and wellness center in Honolulu, Hawaii, right, right. for six years before you six, moved back here? Yes, yeah, six years, yeah. That sounds really good. Yeah, it was good, good, uh, good experience. I bet so. Yeah. Uh, Greg has a Bachelor of Science from the University of Hawaii. He also has a Bachelor in Public Health from Syracuse University. Um, he was also recently a keynote speaker for the American Diabetes Association and the American Heart Association. And you're currently training at Trillium Fitness Center in East Syracuse, right? That's correct, yeah. Well, this is good. I'm really glad uh, that you can speak to us on this because I have some questions for you. All right. Great. So, basically, you know, there are so many different kinds of workouts, but I would, when I look at it, I see, like, two main categories. We have, uh, and they have a lot of subcategories, of course, but yeah. we have resistance training. Yeah. We have endurance or cardio cardio yeah and so how would the goals vary uh, nutritionally with each of those yeah well there's um, there, you have three energy systems in your body right you have your aerobic system you have your uh, lactic acid system and your ATP system mm -hmm. so your ATP system is for the short explosive uh, exercises maybe one to one to five reps and you have your lactic acid system which is uh, maybe higher repetitions, uh, but also, again, short and explosive, like a weightlifting, say, let's say 15 repetitions. Right. So uh, then you have your aerobic system, which is like for long endurance type exercise, like jogging, mm -hmm. like your triathletes. Uh, now they have these races, uh, Tough Mudder and right. Ultimate Warrior. Spartan and all these Spartan, things. Yeah. Spartan, that's the other one. They're, they're going like eight miles, so you're going to have to feel your system differently for those uh, type of events than you would for an, a quick and explosive uh, type of uh, program. So All right. you want to... Um, so our goals vary depending upon the workout that's ahead of us. Right, right. The length of the workout and the intensity of the workout. Yeah. So let's go and let's talk specifically about resistance or strength training. Strength okay, training. Okay, so pre-workout uh, pre nutrition... You're going to the gym, you're going to lift. Yeah. Or you're going to do some type of resistance or strength training. Yeah. What are you looking at for nutrition? So you want to have, for nutrition, for, let's say you're going to the gym, you're going to lift weights. And you're not going to do much cardio other than a warm-up. You want to um, focus on a protein that's easy to digest, so some, something like a fish. Mm -hmm. um, you want to have just moderate levels of carbohydrates, but you want it to be a complex carbohydrate. Something your body can assimilate uh, without having an uh, adverse reaction. Uh, maybe something that's gluten-free, like uh, quinoa, uh, brown rice is good. Mm -hmm. um, versus uh, post-workout, you want something faster acting. You want a lower glycemic uh, work uh, type of carbohydrate. So you want something that digests a little slower. You want to go with your brown rice, your your apples, quinoa, or, or um, pasta. Uh, maybe a multi-grain pasta that's maybe gluten-free. You can have the gluten-free ones uh, with some beans, okay? Right. Pasta and beans or brown rice and beans um, and maybe with an easy-to-digest protein, something like fish or uh, beans are also a source of protein. Um, you, you also, uh, pre-workout, uh, they use a lot of vasodilating type of supplements, but you don't need supplements. Beets are a good source of, um, they, they provide uh, betaine, which is a vasodilator. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah. I remember you telling me that one time. Yeah. That's interesting. 
So um, let's talk about gluten for a minute because yeah. um, I know um, quite a few physique competitors, yeah. bodybuilders who, you know, they avoid it at all costs. How right. does gluten mess with our system? Well, I mean, I'm gluten free for my own reasons. It just yeah. has to do with that. I'm highly sensitive to it. But yeah. how about when you're trying to develop muscle? What well, happens? when you do, it, gluten tends to clog up your system. So uh, there is a few. I would say more often than not, most people don't tolerate gluten very well after 40. Um, mm -hmm. There's a few people that do, but they're they're in a small percentage, maybe the five to eight percent. Mm -hmm. The other 90, 92 to 95 percent don't. Um, so the weightlifters, bodybuilders um, gear their carbs more toward oatmeal, rice, corn base. Even if they have bread, they'll have a corn bread okay. or a gluten-free bread. There's a gluten-free free bakery now in East Syracuse. Yum remember. yums. Yum yum. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so Good you place. can you can yeah. get grains that are gluten-free. Um, apples are gluten-free. Right. So there's other sources. Um, I've done a lot of research now on honey. Uh, honey is one of the best sources of pre-workout carb that you can get. Yeah. Uh, it rest it's there's no food in nature that'll restore glycogen in the liver faster than honey. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you want to uh, get that extra two or three reps, you want to definitely uh, have some honey in there. So mix it in with your tea while you work. Green tea is good. It has antioxidants in there. It has a little bit of caffeine. Caffeine can be a good pre-workout for both both weightlifting workouts and for endurance workouts. Great, um, great. That's so good So honey is a, is a really, really good plus. Caffeine, or you put some honey in your coffee as well. Sure. Yeah. Any difference between, uh, I've always heard buy local honey because of the allergens and their your body probably be more used to that or can assimilate it better. Do you know anything well, it'll, about that? Well, it'll, it'll pre um, local honey will help with allergies because there it's developed from the pollens uh, that are local. So you're less likely to react to the pollens in an adverse way with uh, sinus congestion, sneezing, and allergy type symptoms if you're using a local honey. Okay. Um, uh, carbohydrate wise, it's pretty much the same as the other one. Um, Local honeys have a lot of the, um, not necessarily different antioxidants, but they're developed from different um, pollens. Okay. And so you, you're, you're going to react more favorably. And, All right. Uh, yeah, they tend to be raw, the raw, raw local honey, not the heated, denatured ones. Right, right. Yeah. I know it tastes better, too. It tastes a whole lot better. I like better. it. Yeah. Um, good, good. So what are some things you'd be looking for in a pre-workout drink, let's say, before weightlifting? Well, you want to um, increase, uh, something that increases your the size of your blood vessels. So you call that vasodilate, something that makes them bigger. Okay. Um, the beet, beet at root extract mm -hmm. will do that. Uh, arginine, the amino acid arginine, also will vasodilate blood vessels, uh, help you get the so-called the pump. Um when you combine the, the two with uh, niacin, which is a B vitamin, mm -hmm. and uh, that also increases the uh, blood, uh, it dilates the blood vessels. Okay. So you're going to get a better pump. You're going to get a better workout, and you're going to get a faster pump, and it's going to stay uh, longer. So the more circulation, the more nutrients you get to the muscle, then the faster they recover. So um, definitely th those things, beetroot extract, uh, beta alanine and creatine are also two things that enhance uh, protein synthesis inside the muscle. All right. So you want to get that inside the muscle. So normally you take some carbs with that to improve the absorption. And the beta alanine and the creatine piggyback on the carbs and shoots inside the muscle, piggybacks to the glucose. And so you want to have some carbs pre-workout, not too many, maybe let's say 15 to 30 carbs before you work out. Mm -hmm. And then you put a little, a little bit higher doses after you work out to replenish. Uh, another thing you want um, for uh, stamp to, to increase your endurance uh, when you're working out, uh, again, this is like between 6 to 15 repetitions with short rest in between. Uh, vitamin B12 is good. Okay. Uh, it helps the red blood cells. It helps the red blood cells are right. the ones that carry oxygen to your muscles. All right. And baking soda, you'll see it in the workout yeah. drinks, sodium bicarb, lactate buffers. It's just baking soda, just a pinch. You throw it in your bottle of water or Gatorade, 
Um, it uh, it buffers the lactic acid that can in your make system, a big difference. and it can change it from uh, from doing 12. Let's say you're doing 12 reps with 150 on bench. Now you're doing 15 reps because right. your your lactic acid is buffered. Got it. So that's yeah, a little, that's good. and it's cheap too. Baking soda is uh, 80 cents a box. Well, last year a year. Yeah, last year <laughs> one a year. box will last you a year. A box will last you a year is yeah. about 50 to 80 cents. Yeah. So that's not a bad price. No, that's a good deal. Yeah. So anything more that you'd like to address about resistance, or weight training, strength training, pre-workout nutrition? Yeah, if if you um, if you missed a meal, let's say you sk you had breakfast and you skipped lunch because you were busy at work, mm -hmm. and you're going and you're going to work out with the weights, I would take that extra five minutes and stop by a, uh, even a convenience store or a gas station and grab a banana or a yogurt. Get something in your system because your workout is not going to be as productive without any amino acids or any carbs yeah, in your system. Very true. Um, if you you can, people say, "Well, that's going to cut into my workout time." It's it's uh, time lost that as well. It's good. You're going to make up for it on the recovery because you're going to have. First of all, you haven't eaten in nine nine or ten hours. You're not going to have a good workout. Yeah. So, and second of all, you're not going to recover because your glycogen's already depleted. And you're going to be mentally drained as well. So your focus is going to be off, and that's when things get dangerous. Yeah, that can lead to a bad workout or maybe or even an injury. injury if yeah. you if you lack that concentration, yeah. you can lose form yeah. or you're not strong enough or both, and right. boom, next thing you know, you've got to torn something. Or we or, have a guy passed out on the floor. And yeah. I hate it when that happens. Oh. I, I, I don't like that either. Yeah. I hate it when they pass out. <laughs> that's a bad out. workout. Then, then we got to revive it. That's a so, bad workout. Yeah. All right, so... All right, so resistance, strength, yeah. anything additional? No, that's, that's about cover. So you want your, you know, beta alanine, creatine, some complex carbs, uh, or, or even more a simple carb. The only simple carb I would use is honey. Uh, other than that, I wouldn't use anything with any high fructose corn syrup. want to stay away from that for any workout, regardless. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. <laughs> because, because I... That is the I, poison um, of all athletes. Yeah. High fructose corn syrup. Well, it's not going to only not help your performance, it's going to decrease your performance. Because your sugar yeah. go way up and then way down. Now, I'm really glad you said that. I could go off on a very long tangent about that, which yeah. I will not do. Yeah. Other than to say... We could talk an hour on high fructose corn It's poison to yeah. the body for yeah. anybody. Yeah. But um, it's and just it's, nice to have... Uh, you say that because I think, you know, when, when I talk about this with people... Um, they're so, I mean, this is a generalization, of course. There are a lot of people who aren't thinking that it's, you know, yeah. uh, Gatorade's going to kill us or anything. Yeah. But um, I think Gatorade is putting high fructose corn syrup in there. They are. They and are. That's, that's, and they're they thinking didn't it's, used to do that. Yeah. And they used to use maltodextrin. Right. Now they're using high fructose corn syrup, and I don't recommend it. No. So, I mean, people are socially engineered to think that, what they see advertised right. by the food corps, including the Gatorades and the Powerades yeah. and a lot of different... Uh, now you know, I don't mean to pick on anybody, but yeah. but we, 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 yeah. we're also here to help people, too. We want you to know that this high fructose, uh, the corn syrups out there, I mean, they don't metabolize. The body doesn't even recognize it as a real food substance, right. so it shoots it to you know fat. You, yeah. you get fatty liver. Three livers. times as likely yeah. with high fructose corn syrup. You're three times as likely to get fat versus uh, using a substance your body metabolizes 100%, something like honey. Honey. Yeah. There you go. And you need less honey than fructose corn syrup because it's sweeter. Right. Yeah. So, um, well, that's that's a tangent, yeah. folks, but uh, it's worth um, mentioning, mentioning yeah. because, you know, why ruin yeah. a good workout yeah. with some kind of high fructose corn syrup or something like that? It yeah. just doesn't make sense. You just yeah. kind of went in and took the bulldozer in and you're destroying a lot of stuff that you worked hard to develop. Yeah. So so let's move on to cardio. Cardio workouts. This is something that you have to plan the night before. Okay? You want to you want your liver to be fully stored with glycogen. Your your liver converts glucose to glycogen. Okay? And if your liver is depleted of glycogen, you're not going to have a good cardio workout. Okay? So you will definitely want to restore that. So the night before, let's say you're doing the 
the Tough Mudder. What was the other one? Warrior. Spartan. Spartan. Warrior. Or, yeah. Spartan or Warrior. These are eight mile obstacle courses. So you definitely want to carb load the night before. Not really necessary for a weightlifting workout, but for eight mile obstacle course or a triathlon, mini triathlon, mm -hmm. those kind of things. For a woman, I would recommend two, 200 carbs at least in the dinner before. 200 uh, complex carbs, gluten free. Uh, again, use stuff like cornbread, brown rice, rice and bean plates, um, apples, grapefruit, things like that, or even bananas as well. Um, not too many bananas though, because they tend to be, uh, if they're ripe, they tend to be more sugar. Um, things like that, fresh fruit, grapes, things like that provide a lot of electrolytes. Electrolytes are very important for cardio, okay? Mm -hmm. So 200 grams for a woman the night before, 300 to 350 grams for a man the night before the, the race. The morning of the race, try at least 50 to 70 hour before you race, hour or hour and a half. Before you race, 50 to 70 for a woman, for a man, 75 to 150 grams of carbs that morning. Okay, so you get some uh, gluten-free bread or cornbread, put some honey on it, uh, drink some uh, apple juice with that, uh, things like that. Again, uh, you want to, you know, your electrolytes. So you want to use uh, natural fruits. You don't want this uh, stuff with high fructose corn syrup in it. Artificial drinks. Um, sure, you could get, we could easily get 150 carbs from, a, you know, uh, 16 ounce soda. You could pound that down and you'll get a little caffeine as well, but that's not going to help you. You're going to, your performance will decrease. The phosphorus in the soda is going to leach calcium out of your bones. You're going to need more calcium, not less, when you're doing the cardio. Okay. Um, and, yeah, that's good information right there. Yeah, and uh, you de you want to get some protein, but the emphasis is going to be on the carbs. So a, a rice and beans dish is good. Um, with oatmeal, you might want to have a little bit of yogurt with that in the morning. So oatmeal with some honey, a little bit of yogurt, or you can use um, almond milk. Um, you can mix oatmeal oatmeal with egg whites before you race, hour and a half maybe. Um, the egg whites very easy to digest protein. You don't want a protein like red meat before you race because red meat is very yeah. hard for your body to digest. It's going to slow you down in the race. Right. If you right. eat a hamburger right before you go run, it's going to slow you down. The fat slows down the... Um, I have a, uh, yeah, I have yeah. a question for you. Yeah. So, how soon before a workout, uh, like a um, cardio or endurance workout, how soon before that should I be eating? And does it vary depending upon if it's a five mile, five mile run or a Spartan race or a marathon what, what am i doing well on all three of those i was uh somewhere between an hour and 15 minutes an hour and a half you okay. want you want the carbs to be in your system mm -hmm. okay you don't want to be trying to digest the food when you're running because it's going to pull your, it's going to pull the blood source from your stomach it's going to uh, pull from your muscles mm -hmm. it's going to your your circulation will be pulled here in your stomach when you're trying to digest the food i would give it for an eight mile race, I would give it um, maybe 80, 75, 85 minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. How about carb loading? I hear about this. I've never done it, and the furthest I've ever ran in a timed race was a half yeah. marathon. Yeah. Um, never paid it, made it past 20 miles running, training for a marathon, but I hear about carb loading. Can you tell carb, us about carb that? Carb loading is very cost effective uh, type of. Um, supplementing where you can improve your performance there's been uh well a lot of research done on the navy seals on uh on long runs 10 mile runs where they shorten shorten their time by several minutes by mm. carb loading the night before really yeah several minutes not several seconds several minutes, minutes. Wow. so you're talking a huge difference you can shave three or four minutes off your time or even five or six minutes on a longer race like a marathon. That's a lot. That's a I can put you in another category. Whole, you're, you, you become from an intermediate level to an advanced level just by by carb loading. And with carb loading, uh, specifically, um, they're talking about maybe four to 600 carbs. Okay. Carb, that would be like a heavy carb loading. That would be only for like a really long endurance, more than, more than eight miles. Something right. like a... Half marathon, you know, 12 miles or 20, 26 miles or okay. something like that.
Now, because I've heard of people starting to carb load days before. I mean, is that necessary? Because I, I actually don't know anything about that. Um, is this something that people would do before an Ironman or something like you, that? You would probably start a day and a half before. Okay. day and a half before, trying to get four to 600 carbs a day for those two days. The low-carb diet uh, that you hear about, the Atkins, if you're an endurance athlete, if you're a triathlon, it's not going to it's gonna. Your yes. performance is gonna seriously suffer. Um, I'm glad you, to hear you say that if too. You think you're, <laughs> if you think you're nervous uh, the day of the race and you can't you can't eat because you're nervous, well, take a tablespoon of honey. That's loaded with carbs, and it's yeah. gonna your body will process it very efficiently, and it has a lot of antioxidants in there too as well. Um, so get the carbs in before those long races, and you're gonna see the difference. Now. The uh, Canadian Journal of Applied Physiology did research, and mm -hmm. they found that, yeah, several minutes on races over 10 miles that you can decrease no just kidding. by uh, keeping the carbs in your system. And you'll burn it out. Don't worry, don't worry about gaining the weight. You'll, you'll burn it. If it's clean carbs, don't worry about gaining If it's coming from cake, then maybe you have to worry. Yeah. Actually, I, yeah. I think I'm going to try the carb load yeah. next time I do the longer. Yeah. Uh, my next goal running is a half marathon again because it's been a while. Yeah. Um, so let's talk. Can we segue to HIT training? HIT training. High intensity interval training for those of you who yeah. don't know what HIT is. H I I T. How would your pre HIT workout nutrition vary from the other two, or, or would it vary at all? Well, well, yeah, it would be a combination of the two. Um, like with a marathon running, creatine and stuff like beta alanine and arginine, those aren't really going to help you, but they will help with the HIT because you have to do a lot of reps. Um, you want to use um, baking soda because you're you're building up lactic acid in there. It's not your aerobic system; it's your lactic lactic acid mm -hmm. system. So you a little bit of baking soda in your uh, water or your diluted apple juice um, is going to help buffer the muscles for those extra reps. Um, stuff like CrossFit, they do 30, 40 repetitions per station. Mm -hmm. um, so you build up a lot of lactic acid. Right. Um, your carb, you're not loading up the night before 400, but you definitely want to hit at least 150 to 200 carbs mm -hmm. on a CrossFit or uh, those or the HIT training type right. of training. You're doing stations, maybe you're two minutes at each station, so you you might even go up to 60, 70 reps. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so definitely a combination, easy to digest protein. Again, you don't want to eat the heavy red meats, the um, yeah, pot roast and things like that. Yeah. Heavy meats take hours to digest. Hours. Yeah, that's so a lot of work for the digestion. It's not even going to be efficiently in your system for four hours, and it's going to slow your everything down. Um, uh, really easy to digest would be like egg whites, protein. Okay. Um, maybe the night before you have uh, pasta and beans, if like a gluten-free pasta, you can have brown rice and beans or tofu. Tofu is very easily digested. Good, good. Let's I'll tell you, this is all really, really helpful. And I, uh, any last words of wisdom about pre-workout nutrition? Um, we covered, you covered a lot yeah. here. Yeah. We got resistance, strength, cardio, endurance. We got hit. We hit. Yep. The main thing is, if you miss a meal, take the, take the five minutes. If you're going to a class, a, cross, a CrossFit class or an aerobic class, take the extra five minutes Get a half a banana or an apple in your system and maybe a yogurt because your workout will be more productive and you'll be more mentally focused and you're less likely to, to have an injury. Stay safe. All right. Hey, thanks again. It's great okay. to have you here. All right. Good I've, to see you, My Carl. good friend Greg Giuliano and training guru. Thanks again for tuning in to uh, HunzaHealthy.com, Ask the Expert podcast series. Have a great day, folks.